welcome to another episode of Zeno's Live. Today we have Afreen with us with another bio episode. Over to you, Afreen. Hello, everyone. So today we're going to look at IGCC Biology Chapter 12. That is respiration. So I think the chapter is split into like three parts. The first part, you're going to deal with, uh, you're going to look at the uses of energy in living organisms. And um, yeah, that, that, that's about it for this chapter, for this part of the chapter. Um, so first of all, respiration is basically a, re a series of chemical reactions that break down nutrient molecules in living cells to release energy. And this is a definition, could come for um, two marks. You need to memorize this. There's no getting around that. You need to memorize this. Um, chemical reactions that break down nutrient molecules in living cells to release energy. There's, it's, it is what it is. Um, really nothing to elaborate here. It, there's food, you intake food molecules, and these food molecules are broken down by your digestive system <clears throat> and then carried around uh, to different cells in your body by the blood. And by the time it's in your cells, it's obviously very, very small pieces, small molecules and individual components. So like if you eat um, meat, the, 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 the chunk of meat is going to break down to proteins and carbohydrates and fats. So each of these components, food, uh, food molecules, they're going to be broken down to their fundamental molecules. So that's proteins, fats, and carbs. And then they're going to travel around your body in, uh, by your blood. And then they're going to be broken down inside your cells and uh, energy is released in the form of ATP, that is uh, adenine triphosphate, but you don't need to know the full form of that. You just need to know that energy is released in the form of ATP. Now we look at the uses of energy in human body. There's muscle contractions and then protein synthesis, cell division, active transport, growth, passage of nerve impulses, maintenance of constant body temperature. So a lot of these processes here are actually processes that we will look into in coming chapters. But some of these uh, you should already be able to tell, like cell division and growth and active transport, muscle contraction. These are things that's these are things that's happening in your body constantly throughout the day, uh, that's keeping you healthy. And then stuff, the things like these take energy. And yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. We will look at processes like passage of nerve impulses and maintenance of constant body temperature and protein synthesis in um, the coming chapters. <clears throat> so that's it for the first part of the chapter. We look at aerobic respiration now. So in this part of this chapter, in this part of the chapter, you look at, you're gonna define aerobic respiration and then we look at the chemical equations involved in the process. So this is also not a very big part. Over here, once again, you basically have to memorize this entire slide. So first of all, you have the definition. Aerobic respiration is the chemical reactions in cells that use oxygen to break down nutrient molecules to release energy. In short, simple words, aerobic respiration is respiration in the presence of oxygen. Okay. So over here, you have to, met in order to break this down for you, the definition of aerobic respiration, you need to mention the definition of respiration and you need to mention in the presence of oxygen like that's a key word if you do not mention that part you will lose marks <clears throat> in the presence of oxygen important 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 i cannot stress that enough because that's literally what it is now we look at the equations um if you're doing the extended part of the syllabus you will need the chemical equation otherwise you just need the word equation part of it so glucose plus oxygen breaks down um, reacts to give carbon dioxide and water Let's look at the chemical part of it. C6H12O6, that's glucose. 6O2, that's oxygen, gives 6CO2 plus 6H2O. Six molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of water. Now you look at that again. One molecule of glucose plus six molecules of oxygen gives six molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of water very important that you memorize this or you learn how to balance the equation because if the equation is not properly balanced you may lose marks um, kind of depends on the examiner but i highly recommend that you learn how to balance the equation learn the numbers properly 
because it's extremely important because sometimes they they might give you the elements involved and then they'll give you a blank space for you to mention the numbers that would balance the equation and it could come for one two or three marks even yeah that, that that's basically it for that part now you have anaerobic respiration so this one's a little lengthier over here once again you have the definition and then you have some statements that you need to learn and then you have the uh re the equations word and chemical equations and then you need to know about what uh how oxygen debt is removed so we look at all of that now <clears throat> aerobic respiration presence of oxygen anaerobic respiration absence of oxygen so over here once again you've got two key points you need to mention the definition of respiration and then you need to mention in the absence of oxygen like that is the key word here so anaerobic respiration is the chemical reaction in cells that break down nutrient molecules to release energy without using an oxygen or in the absence of oxygen like that's the key word that's what's happening here now the important thing about anaerobic respiration is that much less energy per glucose molecule is released than in than aerobic respiration so if you take um one molecule of glucose and then you put it through aerobic and anaerobic <coughs> you'll see that more energy is released when it's broken down through aerobic respiration so that's a key point here less energy is released in anaerobic respiration and uh, another thing is lactic acid is released when uh, during anaerobic respiration and this builds up in muscles during exercise vigorous exercise especially so when you're running a marathon or something like that lactic acid builds up in your muscles and it creates an oxygen debt so that means your cells require more and more oxygen than what it's getting and this can cause muscle cramps wherever the lactic acid is accumulating that part of your body could be cramping so these are the equations over here you need to know two parts you need to know the equation in muscles and in yeast in muscles there's uh, like i said no oxygen involved so there's no carbon dioxide in the products so glucose is broken down to lactic acid Th that's literally what's happening here glucose breaks down into lactic acid there's no other reactants no other products there's just glucose and lactic acid extremely extremely important you will lose marks if you try to include carbon dioxide here it's just glucose that breaks down to lactic acid you do not need to know the chemical formula of lactic acid <coughs> this part of it just knowing the word a word equation is fine then you have the yeast uh, anaerobic respiration is ye in yeast so this is basically in single cell fungi and for igcc you take the example of yeast so glucose once again just a single product nothing else glucose breaks down to ethanol plus carbon dioxide for this one you do need to know the chemical formula one molecule of carbon glucose that is c6h12o6 breaks down to give two molecules of ethanol that is 2c2h5oh plus two molecules of carbon dioxide to co2 important that you memorize this and this is basically if you notice ethanol ethanol is an alcohol and this is basically the process that is used in um, many uh, alcohol brewery um processes and yes so that is one of the features that you need to know for fungi you need um, they could ask you this for anaerobic respiration like what are the products that can be formed with this so there's alcohol and there's bread so the carbon dioxide that's been up, uh, produced here you'll notice that yeast is very popular in bread making and that's because the carbon dioxide that's released here <coughs> is uh giving the bread that volume so when you cut a bread open you'll see a lot of air bubbles lots of holes so those are created by the carbon dioxide during the proofing period and yeah so there's two main uses of yeast that is in making of alcohols and making of bread and you need to be explain you need to be able to explain why so there is the ethanol and the carbon dioxide which is leading to that okay so we looked at the majority of the syllabus now this is i think the last part 
So we are looking at removal of oxygen death. So like I said, oxygen death is when your cells don't have as much oxygen as they need. So an oxygen death is created. And it's extremely important that you repay this oxygen death or remove this oxygen death. And it's in three main, main steps. Um, you don't have to go into detail for this, uh, detail about this for IGCC. The first step is your heart continues to beat faster, much faster than the resting normal, uh, than resting rate to transport lactic acid from the blood, uh, in the blood from the muscles to the liver. That, that's a little confusing, but if you just are able to visualize it, like I said, the lactic acid builds up in the muscles. So this is transported by the blood to your liver. So if you'll remember, blood is the transport medium for most solutes in your body. So food molecules, water, carbon dioxide, oxygen, lactic acid, it's all transported by the blood. So this is exactly what's happening here. Blood carries the lactic acid from your muscles to the liver. <coughs> and, and then, <coughs> sorry. And then you continue to breathe faster and deeper to, um, you know, supply more oxygen so that this lactic acid can be broken down by aerobic respiration in your liver to release energy. So what's happening here is energy is released from the lactic acid via aerobic respiration. And this is happening in your liver. And then the last step is creation of lactic acid in the liver. So he, the important points are lactic acid is transported from muscles to the liver via blood, where in the liver it is broken down to release energy by aerobic respiration. And that's it. That's very simple, very straightforward. Uh, you should be able to get it by now. <clears throat> okay, so that's it for the questions. Now we look at that, that's it for the topic. Now we look at some questions. This is May, June 2020. The substances listed are associated with aerobic respiration. Number one, carbon dioxide. Number two, glucose. Number three, oxygen. Number four, water. The, remember, the list is associated with aerobic respiration. Which substances are products of aerobic respiration? So you have to be able to think back to the equation that is, Glucose plus oxygen gives carbon dioxide and water. So the products are one and four, that's carbon dioxide and water. So the correct answer is B. This is May, June, 2020, once again. The formula C2H5OH represents a chemical produced during anaerobic respiration. Keyword anaerobic, and it's a product. So what is this chemical? You should be able to say, um, by now, you should be able to memorize it, and it should immediately come to your head. C2H5OH is ethanol, that is an alcohol. So the correct option is A. And that's it for this chapter. Thank you, Afraid, for your time today. And we both hope that respiration got a lot more easier after this video. You can see our social media handles that will pop up on the right side. Thank you so much for your time today.